by Aristotle, one of the most important people of all history. The public school system did not fail me, Dante. Of course I know who Aristotle is. Oh yeah? Well, I think as somebody who is going to politics and communications, he is so important. He taught me so much about rhetoric, he taught me how to um, form an argument, how to use my words correctly, how to um, format any speech I give. Oh, I wish there was so much more I know about it, but the books are just, they're not there. I wish I could go sit and talk to him and be in one of the speeches. Why don't you go, like, summon him from the dead then, Dante? You know what, Christian? That's a great idea. Yeah. Let's go do it! Uh, alright. Dante. You alright? You seem different lately. I'm not Dante, I'm Aristotle. That doesn't make any sense. Um, yes it does. Dante wanted to get smarter or whatever and try to better his rhetoric skills. So he tried to do a seance to bring the ghost of Aristotle back. And I seized that chance so I could steal his body and start spreading my message again. Alright, why do you talk like you're from the century? Um, well, I mean, I still have parts of Dante's brain in here and also my vocal cords wouldn't change because I'm still the same person. Aristotle. There you go. Let's learn a little bit about yourself. We all know that you're Greek, but when did you live? Oh, everybody knows I'm a proud Greek. I'm very proud of my heritage, you know. But um, apparently, according to your guys' culture and time, you guys created a thing called BCE, and I lived in 384 BCE to 322 BCE. Sounds like I aged backwards for some reason. I don't understand your guys' time. That's like 2,200 years ago. Have you just been like kicking it in the ghost world by yourself for that long? Like, oh, I can't, I'm not really allowed to tell you anything about the ghost world, so, or if there even is a ghost world, but it's pretty fun, just gonna say that. Huh, did, uh, did anyone else live during that time or are you the only one who's come? Like, you're, you're, you're the big bad, that's why you get to come back? Or? Well, there's some important people, like my own mentee, which I'm really proud of, uh, you guys called the great, named Alexander, if you've ever heard of him. Uh, I uh, taught him for a little while. Wow. Would you say he's the most important person to live in your time? Um, most important. You're lucky to at him right here. <laughs> So why did you have to come back to talk to the people of today? What are some of our problems? Well, I think the people of your today, uh, if you can look at any of your media or whatever that is, uh, they have really bad rhetoric. They need to learn how to negotiate, how to debate, how to even talk. None of them know how to do that. And how would you suggest we do that? Well, as the writer of the great book, The Rhetoric, I can give you everything you can possibly need to know. I broke the books up into three based off of the collection of my students' very own notes. Um, book one is an overview of their presentation of the purpose of rhetoric, uh, followed by um, book two. But book three also is about Lexus and the styles of how you, which is about the styles of how you talk, and uh, taxes, which is the arrangement of those words. Interesting. Oh, you think that's interesting? Wait until I talk about my second book, which is Dante's personal favorite. Which one's that one? Um, that's the one that talks about ethos, logos, and pathos. I, wh what does that mean? Oh, well, one, is, um, one of the ways you have to form any argument or any speech is by using all three of those. Uh, ethos is about your character, or as you may say today, your ethics. Uh, logos is about logic, using your brain. Then the last, pathos, is about your emotions. It is very important for every debater, speaker, anyone who is saying something to try and use all three of these tools to make a strong statement. Now, each person is going to be stronger in one of these categories, but they need to be able to use all three of them. Can you tell me what is so important about this young man? 
Well, sir, Aristotle, to quote yourself, of the modes of persuasion furnished by the spoken word, there are three kinds. The first kind depends on the personal character of the speaker. The second on putting in the audience into a certain frame of mind. The third on the proof provided by the words of the speech itself. Wow, very impressive, young man. I can't believe that uh, that quote has survived for such a long time. Neither can I. <laughs> well, uh, yes, that is right. And uh, what is what it means is that we can be um, that all of these um, categories can be used together to help a crowd get into the mood that it needs to be to understand the statements that is trying to be made. Wow, that is very important for our leaders today to use. Imagine if our president and other world leaders were better at using these categories. Would they be able to save this planet? Yes, I think that would be um, very beneficial because um, a lot of people don't know how to use these all together to make them all unify and to make them just flow into one another. Um, and there's a lot of different problems that our leaders have today. Uh, a few of these problems that even people, everyday people have, um, that causes them to not appeal to all crowds. One of these is something that I have always um, thought that we as humans have problems with. And that is that we put too much ethos and pathos, emotion and ethics into everything we say. I think that if we strengthen our logos and provided a lot more proof, a lot more thought and persuasion in every argument and statement we put into, it would very much increase that truth and feel of every speaker today. Oh wow, how did you know that that would be a problem, even to this day? Well, from watching so many debates back in um, Greek, um, back in the Greek era, and just being there to give all that information and talking to people, I have learned so much, but one of the most important examples and most weirdest and bizarre examples was um, there was one of my rivals. He uh, really, really wanted to get at me. He wanted to stab me in the back any possible way. And one thing us Greeks are really proud about is our beards, even though, I mean, this body doesn't really have the best of beards. But uh, we were very proud of our beards. And so he tried to come and attack me based off of this beard. And by doing this, he uh, uh, went around and telling people that I went to barber shops and would steal hair from the ground and put it onto my face with some sort of paste or something to create my beard. He told everybody that and nobody believed him or had any care for his well-being anymore because that was so illogical and so limited of proof. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you don't have proof for any statement you're saying, and you just go into it with all emotion and ethics, but you have no proof. No one's ever going to trust you, and no one's going to ever believe you. Man, I wish that our politicians today would take a page out of your book. Literally. I, <laughs> I really wish that they would take a page out of my book, too. Well, that's why I came here to tell you more about ethos, pathos, and logos, and tell you the importance of these, uh, these philosophies, these quotes, um, to tell you that everybody needs to learn how to use these in everyday speech and in everyday debates. Wouldn't you say so? Absolutely. Thank you for uh, doing this, and I hope this is going to be a hit. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Jeez, man. What just happened? So what you're telling me is Aristotle, the student of Plato, who was killed by his own government 2,000 years ago, was here. Yeah. And the creator of the art of rhetoric, you know, my hero, the who helped create and shape the 13 tricks and fallacies uh, to avoid in any argument, was right here. Yes. Why? What, what did he want? He, he just talked about the importance of rhetoric, and then he talked about, like, uses for regular people and, and politicians. So, like, just, read, just the uses of rhetoric in everyday life and how everybody should be able to use it? Well, did he talk about ethos, pathos, and logos? Yeah, dude. Like, what else was he going to talk about? 
Well, what did he say about it? I don't know. He talked about how they're important to make a strong argument or whatever. And then he talked about how Logos was the most important. And then he just talked about someone cutting off his beard or removing hair in his face. I don't know. What? what? I, I can't believe it, and I missed all of it. Like, you know that like, he is my hero, right? Yeah. You missed it. Because you were possessed. <laughs> Oh. But no, Christian, I don't I don't remember anything. Can you come on. Like I could watch you for a lifetime. You're my favorite.